Hello, friends. Did you go back and take a look at the docs that we had? Okay. I know you said that you were unsure whether you wanted to adopt a dog or a cat today. Did you make that decision? No, you're still unsure. And did you go back and look at the cats that we have available? Okay, and you're still not quite sure? Well, what exactly is um, affecting your decision? Are you... Okay, so you're not quite sure about uh, whether or not you'll have time for a dog, but you would prefer a dog? So when you're adopting a dog, you do need to make sure that you have enough time. Dogs require a lot more attention and a lot more exercise than cats. Um, but cats do still require some attention, um, depending on the personality of the cat that you adopt. Okay, so I can... I have a thing on my laptop here, and I can tell you what uh, different things are required from you for each type of animal. Okay. Have you ever had a cat or a dog before? Oh, you've never had a pet. <laughs> I can see why you're, uh, you're a little undecided. That would be a pretty big decision if you've never had one before. Uh, not even as a child or anything? No? Oh, your, your dad was allergic? Okay. So, would you rather learn about what you need for dogs or cats first? Dogs? Okay, so... Just open up the folder that we have here. Okay, so if you were going to adopt a dog, were you thinking puppy or older dog? I know we don't have many puppies back there, but we do have a few. You wanted to adopt an adult dog? That would definitely um, make it a little bit easier on you. Puppies can be very difficult to deal with. They do like to chew and destroy <laughs> a lot of things. But an adult dog, um, one from a more calm breed. Yeah, so you wouldn't want like a, uh, a shepherd dog or anything where you have to exercise them pretty regularly. Um... So, yeah, those kinds of breeds uh, that require less maintenance. Well, a pug would require a little bit less exercise, but you have to clean in the folds of their skin on their face. Otherwise, they can get infections and things. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to do that. I don't blame you. I have never had a puck, but my friend had one, and it seemed like quite the chore. The dog did not like it when she had to do it, so a lap, yeah, a lap, a lap would be pretty good. Um, laps are, usually they're pretty easily trained. Um, they kind of live to make their person happy. Yeah. Um, and while they do require a lot of exercise, um, they don't require quite as much as high energy breeds do. <laughs> okay, so... A smaller dog would be probably cheaper in the long run as far as food goes. 
yeah. Um, so, all dogs do require some form of exercise, um, fetch, or you can, if your dog is friendly with other dogs, you can always take them to the dog park. Do you live in town? Okay. Well, there's the dog park in town. Do you know where that is? Okay. Yeah, that dog park is pretty nice. They have, um, different kinds of tunnels and ramps and things. Uh, you can walk your dog along those. And it is fenced in, so you can, um, also unleash your dog. Yeah, as long as they're real friendly with other breeds and things, then it shouldn't be a problem. And if they make friends, then their friends can be pretty good at helping them, helping them get some exercise. So, of course, grooming. We kind of discussed that with pugs. So you will need to brush your dog. If it sheds, oh, we don't have any non-shedding breeds here. The non-shedding breeds typically go really quick. Yeah, yeah, they don't, uh, they don't stay around for very long. Usually as soon as we post that we have one on our Facebook, then they're usually gone within a couple days. Um, so are you thinking of a small dog then? Or were you thinking something larger? Labs can be medium size. Uh, they can still be quite large. Um, but if they're mixed with something else, they can, they can come a little bit smaller. Um, so, well, what is your house like? Okay. Do you have anything like a training crate or anything? No, you don't have anything yet. Well, of course, if you don't know if you're getting a dog or a cat yet. Um, but yes, with a dog, you will probably require a training crate, especially for a new dog to the house. You don't want them roaming around at night, especially if they're afraid of a new environment. It's kind of nice for the dog to have its own little, its own little room. Yeah, its own little space. And then, if you are uncomfortable with having the dog out when you're not at home or out at night, you can crate train and the dog will can stay in there. You just need to make sure you also provide stimulation. Yeah, like, um, they make the feeder bowls that you can put food in and they're puzzles so the dogs either have to like use their nose to kind of move the food along the track and then they have Kong uh, peanut butter toys so you put the peanut butter inside and the dog has to work hard to get it out that can yeah that can provide the dog stimulation when you're not at home or you're unavailable to play with it. Yeah. Um, and then of course, uh, you'll be required to sign an agreement to make sure that your dog, uh, if you go with a dog, uh, gets proper veterinary care. Uh, they do require, uh, some shots, even as an adult. Yeah. All of our dogs and cats all have the proper vaccinations per their age, and they are all spayed or neutered. Yeah. Yeah, that's really important. We have enough, we have enough dogs and cats right now, um, especially now that it's spring, we're kind of overfilled with kittens. Um, that would be another option too. Uh, we do have a foster program, so if you're not sure if you want a dog or a cat, you can foster. So you can take an animal and take care of it without adopting, and the animal will still be up for adoption. 
it just frees up a little bit of space in our shelter and with our more nervous animals, the animals that don't really care much for shelter life, uh, that can help them feel safer and calmer if they are in a home environment. So that is something to kind of keep in mind if you're still not sure. And so also, all of our dogs and cats also come with a tracking chip. So if the animal is lost and is brought to us or brought to a vet, they can scan for the chip and they can find your identification, your phone number and things, and they'll know how to contact you. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Um, we've had some animals that have been missing for years and they come in and we scan them and we're able to reunite them with our owner with their owners that's it's really cool um so as far as dog supplies that you will be required to have uh or at least sign an agreement to get so the premium quality dog food and treats so not like cheap dollar store dog food, you want to make sure a real meat is at least the number one ingredient on the list. And then from there, even getting a green free food, um, I recommend a blue buffalo grain free diet, which is what we try to feed the animals here at the shelter. Um, but uh, we also can't afford that all the time, so they do get, like, Alpo and things. And, um, some of our dogs and cats do have health issues where they require special diets. Okay, you wouldn't want to adopt it. Okay. It can be kind of hard and kind of expensive when an animal needs a special diet. The prices of the food really, really can go up. So, of course, you will also need a food dish, a water bowl, and toys, lots and lots of toys, including safe to chew toys. So, you want to make sure you're getting ones that are really made for dogs to be rough with, to tear apart, and that um, they won't get pieces that they can choke on. A brush and a comb for grooming. And a flea comb is also a very good idea, so you can keep up on checking them to make sure they're not getting ticks or fleas. Um, a collar with a license and ID tag in case they're lost. Even if you have them chipped, some people don't know how that works, so... Yeah, so your dog may not make it home if they don't have the ID tag. Um, a leash. A carrier if you have a smaller dog. The training crate that we already discussed. Um, a dog bed or some place for them to have their own space to sleep uh, beyond the crate, just in case they don't like the crate. Or sometimes they might want to be out in the open with you, but still be comfortable. And a toothbrush, so that you can make sure that their dental hygiene is up. And if you plan on clipping their nails yourself, you would take them to a groomer. Okay. Um, so just... So, you know, we do have a leash law here in town, except for in the dog park. So, even if you have a yard, is your yard fenced in? It is? Okay. So, that's really good. It's um, really nice for dogs to have a fenced-in backyard, so they can just, yeah, so they can just go out there and play. And then, of course, always, uh, if your dog poops always pick it up, especially, um, especially at the park or when you're out in public and things. So do you have any other questions about dogs? 
No? Okay. Do you want me to tell you about the cats? Like what would be required? Yes. Okay. Give me just a second to get it loaded up on my computer here. Cats are, cats are quite a bit easier to take care of, as long as you have a low energy cat. Um, especially not a kitten. A kitten, kittens can be, kittens can be pretty difficult. Um, so. Okay, so here's the information, uh, that we have on cats. So, for cats, um, you want to make sure that they are drinking water. Some cats won't drink water. Um, uh, I actually have a cat at home who's like that, and we need to feed her wet food yeah, in order to get her. We also have a water fountain, so cats like it when the water moves when they're drinking it, so you can look into one of those. They're not high maintenance or anything. Um, and, uh, oh, we didn't discuss that with dogs, but you want to refrain from giving, uh, like, table scraps and things. Uh, more healthy things can be okay, like eggs and, um, uh, pure meats and things, uh, that are fully cooked, chicken. Uh, cats can have, um, pumpkin just a little bit if they have, uh, constipation or something that can help with that. Um, but some cats do really like uh, to eat pumpkin as a treat. And of course, with any animal, always take them to the vet if they're showing signs of being unwell. Um, cats, in particular, will uh, because they are a prey animal, um, they will hide if they're feeling sick, so they may seem like they're okay when they're not. So you need to look at the little signs, like if their poop looks different in the litter box, if they're not urinating as much, if they're not eating. Um, all these things can help you, and yeah, always just consult a vet. If you have any questions or anything, or you have any concerns, I know we have a few vets in town that are really good. Um, and so cats, you can brush them uh, to help remove the undercoat and help keep them nice and clean. And it also helps uh, with the fur buildup around the house. Uh, the same for dogs. Um, and of course, if you ever pick up the cat, you want to pick it up carefully. You want to pick it up under the chest, behind the front legs, and support the butt to help, help pick up the cat. Um, that way you're doing it safely. And if you do pick up a cat, never try to turn the cat around so you're holding it like a baby with the belly up in the air. Um, cats can take that as, uh, like an attack, and they can, yeah, they don't typically, they don't typically like that, especially if you get near their stomach. Um, some of them can get kind of aggressive about that if they feel threatened. Um, so the same with dogs. Cats need their own place to be, and, um... It is best if you keep your cat indoors at all times. Uh, cats that are let outside can do uh, damage to the local bird population as well as squirrels and things. And they are also at risk of uh, wounds from fights with other cats. Um, and they can get hurt. And they can also pick up uh, diseases and things from other animals or eating something that they're not supposed to.
You can actually leash train a cat if you feel inclined that you still want to be able to take your cat outside. <laughs> yeah, they even make uh, special harnesses for cats. So you're not just putting all of the uh, weight around a cat's neck, which is a bit more tender yeah, than a dog's. Um, so with cats, uh, then you have the litter box indoors. And typically, you need uh, one more litter box than you have cats. So you will need two litter boxes if you have one cat. Yeah, and um, the type of litter we use here is feline pine. So it's little, uh, they look like wood stove pellets. Yeah, so it doesn't have that um, kitty litter distinctive smell to it. And uh, a lot of the cats here actually prefer it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to clean up. You can even get special litter boxes where all the, um, all the used litter will just drop down and you just pull it out. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to use and it's not that expensive. Um, obviously with cats you have a problem with uh, scratching if they get bored or they're anxious or they just find a place they like to scratch uh, you can put something with a citrus smell there yeah just lemon or orange uh, they make scratch deterrent sprays that you can use um, and then the cat will stop scratching there and uh, it's also advisable to have safe places for the cat to scratch. Um, there's cardboard scratchers, there's carpeted scratchers. I'm see sure you've seen the big towers. Yeah, the big carpeted mansions for cats. I know I have several at my house and there are some here in the, uh, in the cat room. Um, And, of course, uh, if any animal you have ingests something that you don't think is good for it, like um, a poison or a cleaning solution, then you need to contact poison control. Uh, when you do your adoption paperwork, I will give you a piece of paper that has a list of things that the animal shouldn't eat, like dogs shouldn't have onions or chocolate or um, grapes. Yeah, all those things are poisonous to dogs. <laughs> and um, yeah, so you just want to watch out for those things and make sure that make sure that they're uh, well if they eat something that they're not supposed to. It's always good to have an emergency vet care number as well. Um, we have the animal hospital in town that has the, yeah, they have, they have a 24 hour emergency helpline. So if your animal ingests something and you're not sure, you can call that helpline, uh, instead of just taking them right in and they can help you see if you need to bring the animal in or not. And... As far as the cat supply checklist goes, uh, you need, again, a premium brand cat food, uh, something where uh, chicken, turkey, some, some uh, pure meat, not byproduct, not uh, cornmeal, is the first ingredient in the, uh, in the uh, ingredient list. You'll need a food dish, a water bowl, brush, comb, a uh, flea comb as well, because even if your cat is fully indoors, you can still pick up fleas on your shoes or flea eggs. And yeah, and you can also carry ticks into your home. So you want to make sure that you, that you don't have, uh, bugs. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's real easy if either type of animal gets uh, fleas. Of course, with dogs, if you're bringing them outside all the time, or if you are bringing your cat outside, you will want to use a preventative medicine. 
So that can be the drops on the back of the neck, that can be a collar, or you can even give your animal a pill. But yeah, all those things work well to help keep fleas at bay. And if you get fleas in your house, it can be a pain to get rid of them, but um, just remember it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you just, you have to do a lot of vacuuming and just kind of wait it out as long as there is not an insane amount. If you're just finding a few or if there's just a few on your pet, the medicine that the animal has on them that kills the fleas will eventually take care of your flea problem. Um... And, of course, with a cat, you will want a cat carrier. And a safety cat collar with an ID tag. So, a safety cat collar, um, just in case your cat does get out, even if you keep them indoors, has a breakaway. So, cats can get into smaller spaces where they can go climbing around under in bushes and things. And the breakaway collar, if they get stuck, will it'll just um, snap and come off. And that way the cat doesn't choke or get hurt if they are stuck. Um, and then of course, uh, toys for the cat. So there are a lot of different kinds of cat toys that you can buy. Um, I actually have several over here that I can show you. Did you have any other questions about taking care of cats or dogs or anything? No, okay. So we can actually put this away. Let me log off first. Okay. And then I have a few, uh, is here if you would like to okay so we have these these are springs um, you can get them in really big packs because they get lost and uh, used up easily but um, especially one of our cats here uh, really likes to play fetch so yeah, just like a dog, you can throw it and she'll pick it up and bring it back to you and then meow until you throw it again. It's, uh, it's pretty adorable. She'll even bring it up to you when she wants to play so you don't have to initiate the game or anything. She will, she'll let you know. And then we have toys like this. So it has the feathers on it, and a little bell, a lot of cats really like that sound, and there's toys like this as well that they can uh, bat around and chase. And uh, another kind of toy that can be bat around and chased. So this one actually has um, catnip in it. So not all cats like catnip, but if the cat you get does, I do highly recommend having it around. Um, if you put catnip on a toy, then they are more likely to play with it kind of makes it a little more, a little more exciting and fun for them. Um, but, uh, yeah, catnip can make the cat, uh, excitable, or it can make them cuddly and sleepy. It depends on the particular cat. Um, and then you can also get toys like this. This is called a teaser toy. So it has this little bell on it and 
you hold the pole and you can shake it around and cats really like to play with them yeah I don't know if I've ever really met a cat that didn't uh, really enjoy some particular type of teaser toy Sometimes it's a little trial and error when you try to figure out what a cat likes. You might think that they're not going to like a toy and they love it. Um, the same cat that plays fetch, this is um, a makeup brush that another girl brought in and the cat found it on the counter and uh, plays with it all the time. We actually ended up just letting them have it because they kept trying to find it and and um, and that is actually this cat that is with me right now that likes to play fetch and things. You can see her. Yeah, this one's a really good, yeah, she's a really good cat. Um, her name, uh, Maki Maki. Do you have children? You do? She's really great with children. Yeah, she, she loves them. She can handle all the yelling and the flipping about and everything. Yeah, yeah, she has a good time. Uh, she doesn't, no, she doesn't have any health issues. She's trying to play with, <laughs> she's trying to play with all the toys on the desk. She's about four years old. Yeah, she's definitely past the crazy kitten stage. Um, but yeah, she still gets uh, what is called the zoomies. Where, if you know cats, you know that sometimes they just, out of nowhere, go nuts. And they'll just run really, really fast. Just for seemingly no reason. Yeah, she does that a lot. She'll even... Um, go up to a wall and put her front paws on it like this and uh, sit there and all of a sudden she will just spring up and jump like five feet in the air for no reason yeah she's pretty hilarious she's she's definitely a shelter favorite yeah yeah and she's not um She's not really a lap cat. If you uh, have blankets or something, she likes to sleep underneath them. Yeah, she'll burrow down in there. Yeah, she um, treats. Uh, she likes pumpkin and spinach. She won't eat um, meat. She won't eat chicken or fish or anything like that. Pretty much just pumpkin and spinach. Yeah, she's she's a little different. Um, uh, no, she was bottle fed. Yeah, so she didn't have the influence of other cats. So maybe that's... Yeah, she's a little different than a regular cat. Probably just because of she was hand-raised. That can make a difference uh, in a cat's personality if they're not around um, other cats when they're very small. But uh, she's really well-behaved. She never scratches or bites or anything like that. We've never had, uh, we've never had problems. Okay, so you would like to, you'd like to adopt her? Okay, um, I have all the paperwork that we can fill out right here. And, okay, and here's... 
here's a pen. Yeah, we don't fill these out um, online. We just fill out the paperwork and then later I will scan it and put it on the computer. It's just nice to have a hard copy, uh, especially for your signature. So, what is your name? Okay. And, uh, do you have your driver's license with you? You do? Okay, if you could have just said that. Okay. I just need the number. Just for, um record purposes so we can make sure that way if you change your name or we need to find you or something that is one way that we can find out how to contact you in case you move change your number anything like that and you said you lived in town right okay and so you're the four nines okay your 496, okay. And what is your home address? And your phone number? Is that home or mobile? Home? Okay. And do you have a mobile? Okay. And the number for that? And do you have an email address we can contact you? Okay. And that's a Gmail? Okay. Um, and the other people in your household? Okay, you have two children. And, okay. Okay, and do you own or rent your home? You own your home. Do you have a spouse or a partner? No. Okay, so it's just you and your two children. Okay, um, and you live in a house, you own, you wouldn't have a landlord name, so we'll put not applicable. Okay, so you wouldn't need to inform your landlord. Um, and the resident li residents listed, your address is where the animal is going to live. Yes, and is everyone in your household in favor of adopting? Yeah, yeah, your kids are pretty on board. Do they know you're here today? No? Oh, it's a surprise when they get home. I bet they'll like that. And what is your household activity level? Uh, low, moderate, active, or very active? Moderate. Okay. And who will be the primary caretaker? You? Okay, so we'll put self. And why are you getting this pet? For your kids? Uh, they've been asking for a long time. Yeah. Um, and do you have, you don't have any current pets, right? No? Okay. And so you don't have any current pets, so that's not applicable. Uh, do you understand that your pet will be altered? Uh, that they'll be spayed? And you will be keeping your cat always indoors, okay? That's what we like to hear. Um, 
And where will your cat sleep? You plan on getting a bed? Okay. And how long are you away from the home uh, during the day? About eight hours? Okay. And where will the cat be left when you're gone? Out? Okay. Yeah, well, at first, you'll probably want to keep the cat in a bedroom with food and water and a litter box when you're gone. Um, just to make sure they're not going to, yeah, just to make sure they're safe, that they're not going to destroy anything, and, um, it can also help them learn where the litter box is in the house. Yeah. yeah well, cats, cats typically don't like to go outside the litter box. They want to keep a clean house, just like you do. Yeah. Um... So, you said you had an enclosed yard, uh, but this is all kind of dog questions. We use the same uh, adoption application. Um, so, I'll just put not applicable. Um, do you plan on playing with your pet, or your children are going to play? Yeah, okay. And you understand that you will be responsible for providing meals on a regular basis. Yes? Okay. Well, right now, she gets a free range of dry food all day. And then in the morning, she gets fed a quarter of a can of wet cat food. And in the evening, she gets fed a quarter of a can of wet cat food. And um, we can supply you. Yeah, we can supply you with her current, uh, the current food that she's on to help you adjust and to know what she has. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, do you plan on leaving the cat unattended with your children? Yeah, once they're ready. Yeah, you want to make sure. How old are your children? Seven and nine. Okay, so they're plenty old enough to know. Yeah, to know what to do with a cat and what not to do. Um, so, these are training dog questions, so we don't really need to answer those. Do you plan on trying to train your cat? Well, she, um, you can call her, but she will only come if she really wants to. Uh, yeah, t typically you might have to pick her up. Uh, yeah, she doesn't mind being picked up. No. No, actually, sometimes she quite enjoys it. Yeah, so you can just put her wherever she needs to be, but um, sometimes she will come if you call her. She's just um, kind of her own cat. So, do you plan on buy on um? Do you plan on adopting any other animals? No. Okay. And this is not. Well, I guess technically this animal is a gift for your children. And you said you've never owned an animal before. Uh, if you must relocate, uh, what do you plan on doing with the cat? Okay, keeping the cat. And who will take care of your pet while you are on vacation? You'll get a sitter? Or, or your mom can do it? Okay. Is your mom, does she know what to do? Oh, she has a cat. Um, are you ready to make a lifetime commitment to your new pet? Yes, alright. Are you ready to give your cat daily companionship? Yes. And... Again, a lot of these are about dogs. So, 
cat will. Yeah, she already has her microchip installed. Yeah. Um, are you willing to provide the cat with the average cost of care, which includes uh, $50, about $50 a month for food and treats? Yes. And and uh, the cost of veterinary care? Yes, okay. Um, well, we use the uh, veterinarian over on 14th. Yeah, in the Brown Building. Yeah, he's really good, and he works with us on helping us keep the cost down and everything. Uh, and he also does payment plans, which can be nice if you can't afford a big bill or anything. Yeah, they can they can really help you out with that. They're pretty good at that. So, you understand the vaccination schedule. Um, we will give you a list when you before you leave. Yeah, that will tell you the vaccinations that she's already had. Um, the rabies is yearly. Um, which she just got hers uh, a couple months ago, so she sat for a while. Okay, and this cat does not require any special care. And we've already covered the licensing fee. She will come with a tag. Yeah, and, um, goes over there. And uh, a rabies tag. So you know she's vaccinated. Okay, and this is the last paper. Um, do you understand that you will not receive a refund if you need to return the cat? Yes, okay. And um, if for some reason you cannot care for the cat, uh, we do... Uh, prefer for you to bring the cat back to us to find it a good home. Sometimes when uh, citizens, <laughs> when they find homes for their pets, it can be they don't really understand the formal process and everything. Yeah, and then sometimes animals can go to not so good places. Yeah, yeah, you already went through the whole interviewing process and everything, so we know you're good. Um, do you have any questions about licensing? No. Training? No. Uh, leash laws? No. Um, any required permits? No. Uh, what about worms? Well... Sometimes, uh, cats can get worms, but typically that's only if they're outdoor animals. Okay, no. Um, would you like any information about the following, uh, litter box training? N well, she's fully litter box trained. Um, I don't think she's ever gone outside the box since we've had her. Okay, so no. Um, what about scratching? Um, treats? No. Um, well, with treats, you just want to make sure it's a high-quality treat, like the food we discussed, so that they're getting, yeah, so that they're getting the nutrients that they need. Okay, so... Microchipping? No. Um, separation anxiety? No. Um, and you said that you'll be using the vet over her, her current vet? Yeah, okay, so... And, um, we, we can contact the vet, or you can contact the vet? You will? Okay. And a phone number for that vet is... Keep it over here, hold on. Okay. Okay. 
and then uh, you will just need to sign and date this. Okay, and then um, you want to go back over. Okay, yeah, and you can look back over this paperwork yourself. Uh, take all the time you need. And then she can actually go home with you today if you feel like you're prepared. Okay, you still need to go get some supplies. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we can hold her for up to three days before she'll go back up for adoption. Okay. And then you just need to pay your fee at the desk. So the adoption fee for a cat is $30. Yeah, and then you just pay that out front, and everything should be ready to go. And like I said, you can pick her up um, today, tomorrow, or the next day. And then she will be put back up for adoption. Okay, thank you so much for stopping in. I'm sure you're going to make a really great cat parent.